When we asked our clients what their biggest problem is with building a house in 2021, they interestingly said it was finding a good block of land. This then leads us to the decision on whether you should build a new home or buy an existing home. So to, in this two-part series, we're gonna look at the pros and cons of both buying a house or building. So let's get stuck in. Now, buying an established property has some great positives. We find that people often buy existing homes close to where they're currently living and they know the locals, they have a feel for the area already. Uh, here are some key benefits with buying an established property. Your home is gonna be move-in ready. You can move into an existing home on the settlement date. Generally, contracts in Queensland are 30 days and realistically, you can be in your home within that 30 days of signing a contract. The second is that you're gonna have established neighborhoods. Now, you can drive through an existing suburb and see what the lifestyle is like. That being said, no one can predict what the area is gonna be like in the future. The third is renovations. Now, with this, you can create growth by flipping an old home and adding space to it. If you watch shows like The Block or Reno Rumble, you'll know that renovation is not for the faint hearted. If you do go down the Reno road, make sure you build the right property at the right price and it also is crucial you understand the renovations and how they're gonna yield the best result. So strategy is gonna be a key part here. Number four, auctions. Now, if you enjoy a spot of gambling, auctions are a good way to win or lose big amounts of money in a small amount of time. So some of the problems with established properties are, number one, maintenance. Home wear and tear over time, and if you aren't handy, you're gonna be paying a fortune in tradie bills. This is especially true if you've got little ones and you know you can expect them to certainly test the breaking strength of your home. Number two, active real estate market. Now, this is really important in the current market where the real estate is moving so quickly. It is extremely hard to find a property and understand what the price is, um, which ultimately could lead to you overpaying for what you've actually budgeted for. Number three, compromise. It's impossible to find the perfect home in the perfect area with the perfect number of bedrooms. So be prepared to compromise on what you're actually gonna get. Number four, trends. If you buy a house that is built 10 years ago, it's probably still considered modern. Fast forward 20 years. Now this home may no longer be hip or cool. If you build a new home today, it still fits in line with what the current trends are doing. So you've got to weigh up between buying and building and how trendy your home is gonna be. So now that we've looked at the pros and cons of buying an established property, let's look at some of the juicy stuff. What you've all been waiting for, the pros and cons of building a new home. So building new, the positives. We walk through an existing open home. Uh, you might think that the ceilings are a little bit too low or maybe the windows are a little bit too small or the kitchen is a little too old. When you're building a new home, then you can get everything just right. So here are our four pros for building a home. Number one, you can design your home so that it suits you. You can create your own floor plan. You can pick your own colors. You can calibrate your voice activated security systems if you like. The sky's the limits. The second is government incentives. When you build a new home, you can apply for a concession and rebates from the government. This could save you money in all sorts of things from your solar panel to your stamp duty and you know, plus the first home buyer that you, you, you could potentially qualify for an additional $15,000 towards building a new home. 
The third is that your new home is gonna be greener. The world is growing and the people need new homes all the time. By building a sustainable new home, you can use eco-friendly materials, technology, um, to reduce your carbon footprint. And finally, number four, instant equity. Now, as soon as your builder hands you the keys, you could cash in on this active new home market. Now, homes are often valued higher than what it costs to build. Here is an example of a customer who we helped in The Gap, which is in the north side of Brisbane. Our clients were first home buyers and they wanted to qualify for all of the grants, including the new home builder. This meant that we needed to stick to a total budget of $750,000. Now, by the time they'd connected with us, they'd already spent $410,000 of that on a block of land. And our job was then to help them build a two-level house for $310,000. This meant that their total cost was at $750,000, which is the limit that you can go to and still claim all of these government incentives. Interestingly, when the valuer went out to have a look at the property, um, they initially valued the block of land at $410,000 in 2020. And once they'd signed a contract, they valued the contract at you know, $310,000. Now, by signing a fixed price building contract, what the clients were able to do is lock their cost in the August 2020 market. However, by the time they got their keys handed in June, the property was actually valued at $850,000, which meant that they had $100,000 worth of instant equity. And had they wanted to, they could have very easily sold that property for $850,000 and take their $100,000 and you know, put it into the next thing that they wanted to do. Now, building a house is not all sunshine and roses. There are plenty of challenges. When you're building a house, it's a big commitment. And here are our top four negatives. Our number one negative is the long process. Now, building a house could take more than half a year. Uh, a lot of decisions need to be made during this time. At the moment, you are guaranteed to experience some delays. With shortages in materials and trades, um, you best allow for more than less time. Number two, living arrangements. While your build is underway, you might still have to pay rent or mortgage this will have an impact on your family's cash flow. So make sure that you allow an additional amount to cover this extra cost. So number three, confusion. Now, display homes can be kind of spooky. Nobody really lives there, and most of the stuff that you see is not included in the plans. This can make display home tours kind of confusing and awkward. Your builder may have a list of what costs extra, but it's most likely written in tiny font. And lastly, number four. When people build, they take a huge risk when looking at their builders. Their sole source of guidance. Now, builders are experienced, but everybody makes mistakes. The QBCC receives around 6,000 disputes a year, and you don't really wanna fall in this category. Now we hope our tips have helped and if you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe to our channel.